Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. We have a massive video today from former President Donald J. Trump that you do not want to miss, okay? Donald J. Trump just came out and revealed what his plan is, his economic plan to help fix the problems in our country, okay? So Donald J. Trump came out and spoke and he revealed very, very comprehensively what his plans are and I wanted to take a moment on my show to go over that, to talk about Donald J. Trump's economic policies and his plans to fix the country's problems, okay? Uh, before I do, we are going to read the Bible. We're going to pray because God comes first. Amen? Comment amen down below if you believe that God comes first. Today's Bible reading is from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Comment amen down below, my friends. We are getting so close, so close to this election. Things are heating up, and I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little anxious, but I'm trying to remember God has a plan. So without further ado, let's bring on Donald J. Trump. So first and foremost, I wanted to revisit the debate where Donald J. Trump talked about the economy. This was during the presidential debate between Donald J. Trump and Kamala Harris. Let's tune in. It's a good debate. Thank you. See you. Have fun. Thank you. Welcome to you both. It's wonderful to have you. It's an honor to have you both here tonight. Good evening. We are looking forward to a spirited and thoughtful debate. So let's get started. I want to begin tonight with the issue that voters repeatedly say is their number one issue, and that is the economy and the cost of living in this country. Mr. President, I do want to drill down on something you both brought up. Uh, the vice president brought up uh, your tariffs. You responded, and let's drill down on this, because your plan is what she calls is essentially a national sales tax. Your proposal calls for tariffs, as you pointed out here, on foreign imports across the board. You recently said that you might double your plan, imposing tariffs up to 20 percent on goods coming into this country. As you know, many economists say that with tariffs at that level, costs are then passed on to the consumer. Vice President Harris has argued it'll mean higher prices on gas, food, clothing, medication, arguing it costs the typical family nearly $4,000 a year. Do you believe Americans can afford higher prices because of tariffs? They're not going to have higher prices. What's going to have and who's going to have higher prices is China and all of the countries that have been ripping us off for years. I charge, I was the only president ever China was paying us hundreds of billions of dollars, and so were other countries. And, you know, if she doesn't like them, they should have gone out and they should have immediately cut the tariffs. But those tariffs are there three and a half years now under their administration. We are going to take in billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars. I had no inflation, virtually no inflation. They had the highest inflation perhaps in the history of our country because I've never seen a worse period of time. People can't go out and buy cereal or bacon or eggs or anything else. It is true. The cost of groceries, the cost of everyday items, my friends, it's getting ridiculous, all right? So he does have a point there. These, the people of our country are absolutely dying with what they've done. They've destroyed the economy. And all you have to do is look at a poll. The polls say 80 and 85 and even 90 percent that the Trump economy was great, that their economy was terrible. Now, another major move that Donald Trump is doing to help appeal to people in economic ways, he actually showed up to serve fries at McDonald's. Let's tune in today. I mean, we have fries. All right, so guys, can we talk about the retail politics of this McDonald's today? I mean, we have fries thanks to you upon request of Guy Benson. This is for the content of the show, obviously. Mm, yes. Not because I was craving it, having seen the video. And it's dinner time, so it worked out nicely. It's actually fantastic. <laughs> Look at these guys. They're eating McDonald's. <laughs> That's awesome. This is, with my mouth half full, uh, this is such a smart play, mm -hmm. I think, by the Trump campaign. Whether Kamala Harris worked at McDonald's or not, I would guess she probably did. It doesn't really matter. He's decided to troll her on this. And the fact that he got to a McDonald's French fry fryer before she did. And sort of in a humanizing, humorous way, was able to have one of the greatest presidential photo ops I can remember. Just in terms of entertainment value, we hear a lot about joy on the campaign. He seemed to be genuinely enjoying himself today, watching him like 
actually working the fries, filling the little sleeve, yeah. handing the bags of food to people through the window at the drive-thru. He said, I made it myself. Yeah. I, I laughed out loud. And it doesn't matter. Like, take politics out of it. This was a home run day for them. So Joe yep, it was really, really good move by Trump. You know what's actually interesting is shares of Trump's media company soar as betting odds favor White House win. Which actually brings me to my next point. I've been looking for an investing platform that gives me a leg up over all those other options out there. And I think I finally found that in today's sponsor, Moomoo. No matter what experience level you are, Moomoo's got you covered with some amazing tools and features. Like if you're a complete beginner and want to earn money while you're still getting a lay of the land or actively planning your next trade, Moomoo's Cash Sweep program allows new users to earn 8.1% APY on their uninvested cash for three months. And if you're a more advanced investor, there's no longer a need to spend $20,000 or more on Bloomberg Terminal when you can access Moomoo's advanced single stock analysis, research, and trading tools, such as my personal favorite, their industry supply chain all for completely free. Moomoo is also a great place to trade options with detailed analysis, unusual options activity, customizable option chains, zero contract fees for stock and ETF options, and low contract fee index options. Join the 23 million users already on Moomoo and click the link in the description to jumpstart your investing journey today with up to 15 free stocks when making a qualified deposit and 8.1% APY on your uninvested cash for limited time while you plan your first trade. And I don't know if you guys know this, but McDonald's actually celebrated the powerful fact that one in eight Americans have worked at McDonald's. Did you know that one in eight Americans have worked at a McDonald's restaurant? Some go on to be CEOs or astronauts, some others stay on as part of the best crew in our, in our restaurants. I mean, that's actually pretty huge. It's a kind of a good move for Trump to relate to people, you know, in the economic way, because if you have one in eight Americans who have worked at McDonald's, now Trump is relating to those people in that way as well. It, it's actually a pretty, uh, you know, a pretty big move that way as well. Really, from, from the beginning to the end of the McDonald's visit, there were so many different moments. And what I loved were the people coming through the drive through and talking to the president and saying, wow, you came here as ordinary people. We get to meet the former president of the United States serving us the French fries. And he was loving it, waving to the press, talking about his opponent. Yeah, one man I appeared to be maybe Indian uh, said, hey, I'm just an ordinary person. And Trump looks back and goes, you're not ordinary. You're special or something like that. And I think that human connection is important. I think the real human connection here it really is this man wants to be president of the United States. And there's a lot of people out there who are in a part to full time minimum wage hourly job that requires some labor. And they have aspirations to do something else one day. And they can go and vote for someone who at least at one day in his life understood what that means understood what that work is what that what that interaction with people is we know he likes mcdonald's like that was kind of they kind of made fun of him so he, he likes the brand he likes the food but now he knows what it means to do that for a living and it's also making him way more relatable as well he's saying look i'm willing to put in the work i'm willing to flip burgers flip put in some get some fries made go to the drive through hand it out you know he he, it is a it is a pretty strong move. Well, I mean, Donald J. Trump does have a big portfolio of businesses, hotels, golf courses, resorts, and more. Donald J. Trump wrote the book Art of the Deal and is, you know, uh, thought of by many to be one of the best businessmen in the world. Donald Trump was the son of a low cost housing developer in Brooklyn and Queens. Um, look at this, the Mar-a-Lago. Donald J. Trump. Trump National Doral, Trump Old Post Office LLC, Trump Rough and Tower LLC, Trump Turnberry, Trump Media Technology Group. I forgot Trump actually built a whole social media platform. Trump International Realty, the Trump Organization, Trump Commercial Properties. I mean, hey, it does, you know, Trump do, does have a lot of businesses under his belt. Now, this is Donald J. Trump. This is a flashback moment. He explains how he will fix the economy and rising inflation. This was during the debate between Donald J. Trump and Joe Biden before Joe Biden announced that he dropped out of the race. Let's tune in. Thank you, President Trump. We have the greatest economy in the history of our country. 
and we have never done so well. Every, everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. We got hit with COVID. And when we did, we spent the money necessary so we wouldn't end up in a Great Depression, the likes of which we had in 1929. By the time we finished, so we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military and no wars and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. But the thing we never got the credit for and we should have is getting us out of that COVID mess. Other than that, we had we had given them back a a country where the stock market actually was higher than pre-COVID and nobody thought that was even possible. Uh, the only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce back jobs, the bounce back from the COVID. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job and inflation's killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. Now, Trump just revealed his plan to turn the economy around in 12 months. Let's tune in. So Donald Trump, I had asked Donald Trump this on Wednesday, on Wednesday night. Uh, here's what he said about the economy. I think it's two things. I think our economy is terrible, so you could make the case for them, or it's politics, or maybe it's a combination of both. But the economy is bad. Inflation is killing people. We're going to get the inflation way down. I'm going to reduce energy bills for people by 50% within the first 12 months. That's the kind of stuff we have. We have more liquid gold under our feet than any country in the world, Saudi Arabia, Russia. I'm going to reduce energy costs for people. That means air conditioning, heating, cars, everything, by 50%. And we'll do that within 12 months, and I'll be able to do it easily. So, so he said to Brown Energy, he just answered the question. So at least I know, now I can make my decision as a voter. I don't know, still don't know what she stands for, that Meryl, Meryl Streep can go on Zoom. That's what I got from that. Mm -hmm. What? If, if you listen what? To about Meryl Streep? His entire point of view when it comes to the economy right now is that energy prices are too high. And that's not just a talking point, it's, it's in the polling. The energy is up, whether it is the oil, uh, when you're going to, you know, the gas and everything in the country functions around energy costs. Right. That's his position. Now, another thing that Donald Trump is doing to help the economy is he is now intending to bring on Elon Musk to cut costs in the government, which in turn would help boost the economy. Let's tune in. If you're not going to rely, rely on us as the currency of choice, then you are not going to be able to do business in the United States. You know what they're going to say? I love the dollar very much, every single one of them, because we are losing that. You know, China is trying to take that away from us. And I'll I say, by the way, I'll say the same thing to China. Like I put a 27.5% tariff on cars from China. So they haven't been able to pillage our country and close up our factories and lose our jobs. Otherwise, they'd be selling cars in here like hotcakes. Mm. And if you take a look at what they're doing to Europe, China is, is destroying the, auto, the automobile business of Europe. So I'm just trying to understand how you're going to pay for all of this no tax on stuff. And you said that there's a lot of fat no, in government growth. that you're going to no, save. No, I said, money. I gave you an answer, growth. growth. We're going to grow yes. at a level that you've never seen before. Mm, okay. And we're going to have tremendous jobs and we're going to have companies coming in left and right and they're going to be build, building factories. They're going to take over empty hulks that are all over the place from companies that left. But you've also said that there's a lot of fat in government that you would want to slip down. Incredible fat. So, so what agencies would you want to shut down? Well, let me, let me uh, have you ask another person that because I'm going to have Elon Musk. He's, he this is huge. This is going to be a massive move to bring on. And by the way, Elon Musk... He's also the richest man in the world. So Trump teaming up with Elon, like Elon Musk knows a thing or two about business, okay? <laughs> he is dying to do this. You know, he's a great business guy, actually. You think of him for science and rockets, and every time I think he's telling me about a new screw that was developed, he's developed a new screw. Screws are difficult. <laughs> and it's made out of titanium, and it's so exciting. But you know what? He's a great business guy. And he's a great cost cutter. You've seen that. And he said, I could cut costs without affecting anybody. So he will be in the cabinet? Not in the cabinet. He doesn't want to be in the cabinet. He just wants to be in charge of cost cutting. We'll have a new position, secretary of cost cutting. <laughs> Elon wants to do that. And we have incredible people. He's running a big business. You know, he can't just say, oh, I think I'll go into the cabinet. You know, other people can. He can't. But Elon's a little bit different in that sense. And he says that I want him to send the rocket up to Mars. He said, we, he's made me a promise he'll get to Mars before the end of my administration, which will be long before hopefully China or 
Russia. They created a Space Force. First time that's been done since the Air Force. Air Force was the last, it was 81 years ago. Wow. Now, Elon Musk was uh, just asked what his, what his first steps will be if he is put in charge of government efficiency. So let's tune in and let's see what Elon Musk's plan will be if Trump ends up winning and bringing uh, Elon Musk on. Hey Elon, how are you? I'm uh, bra. Uh, these are two tough acts to follow here, but uh, my question is a little more simple. Uh, what are some of the first courses of action you plan to take as a head of government efficiency if uh, Trump gets elected? And do you have any areas of concern in particular? Yeah, uh, well, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I definitely, uh, you know, the focus right now is making sure that, that uh, Trump wins the election. Um, otherwise, it doesn't matter. And, and I think if, if, if uh, Trump loses, we're going to see, you know, our cities are going to get less safe. Uh, borders obviously going to be wide open. Um, we're going to see government spending go ballistic. It's inflation go nuts. It's going to be just bad on, on every level. And, 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 and like, the, fundamentally, if, if, the, if the current trend of, of you know, strang of strangulation by overregulation is not turned around. We will never get to Mars. It just will be illegal, um, and there will be a one-planet civilization, or it won't be a space-bearing civilization. And st Starfleet will, will never be real, um, and I want Starfleet to be real. Yeah. So, you know, um, now I, I've had quite a bit of interaction with the government. Uh, you know, because uh, SpaceX is the biggest uh, NASA contractor, actually. There's, there's a lot of work for NASA. And I'm a big fan of the agency, by the way. Um, but but, it's, but there's, you know, there are expenditures that don't make a lot of sense, uh, that, that are wasteful. Um, and uh, we, we need to put a stop to that. Um, honestly, the, 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 there's so much government waste that's going on that I would call it a target-rich environment. Like, you, it's hard in every direction. This well, is... also keep in mind what happened with Twitter once Elon Musk uh, bought Twitter and turned it into X. He cut a lot of, uh, laid, off, laid off a lot of people, basically, you know, went in and fired a bunch of people and Twitter function. I mean, you, you argue that it, Twitter is actually even more successful now. It's just mad waste. And I think simply, if, if, if people simply know that, well, if, if they waste a ton of taxpayer money, they're gonna get fired, that will immediately improve the situation, immediately. It's like, Yeah, it's, it's just literally, and, and, and I think, but actually, it's, it's going to be both carrot and stick. It's like, so if, if a government official is very effective in spending your money to your, because taxpayer money is your money. <laughs> That's a very fair point. Like, everybody watching this video, like, if you live in America and you pay your taxes, like, you're giving, you're giving the government money. It's like, Elon, has a fair point. If they're effective in spending your money, they should be promoted. They should be rewarded. And if, and if they waste your money or, or do, it, do something that's basically corruption, they should be fired, obviously. Um, so Elon Musk is really going to be, you know, he's planning to use his business skills and just bring that over to the government. I mean, it makes sense to me. Trump announces Elon Musk will head audit of entire federal government. That is such a massive move that Trump is doing, bringing in Elon Musk to head an audit of the entire federal government. I think a lot will be revealed in that. Now, here's Donald J. Trump talking about the economy, tax cuts, and inflation. Let's tune in. The economy is always a major issue. Unemployment is low, but some prices remain stubbornly high. What would you do to improve the economy? And what's your argument against the Biden administration, which says your tax policies only benefit the wealthiest Americans? Yeah. That's a great question. Shout out to this reporter. Let's hear Trump speak on this. Actually, my tax policy, they created the greatest, strongest economy in the history of our country, probably in the history of the world. We had the strongest economy that we've ever had by far. And all Biden did was pick up on it, but he ruined it because he, he 
screwed up energy so badly that inflation went crazy and now inflation's through the roof. Uh, they can't lower interest rates because if they do, you're going to drive up inflation to levels that nobody's ever seen before. We have among the highest inflation we've ever had. We've never had inflation like this and it's sticking. It's not going down at all. Where bacon and, and food products are costing double and triple what they were just a few years ago, where gasoline energy is way up and going up. If you notice over the last couple of weeks, gasoline and and uh, just fuel oil generally, but gasoline has gone way up and the people see it in the tank. I mean, in California, it's over seven dollars a gallon and everything else is following it. So we have to get energy down and we have to get common sense and we have to get taxes lower. He's going to give you the largest tax increase in the history of our country. And he talks about it. But he doesn't know what he's talking about anyway. Everybody knows that. But that's for the wealthiest Americans. And no, no. That's what they say. This is the thing that created the jobs. We had the best jobs programs ever. We had the best job numbers ever. And uh, you know what they say, it's always for the wealthy. Always. It wasn't. The people that benefited the most from my tax cuts, I gave the biggest tax cuts in the history of our country, bigger than the Ronald Reagan tax cuts. The people that benefited the most were low income people. They benefited the most. The middle income were the second most. And a lot of it was because of the jobs we created. We created the greatest juggernaut of jobs that this country has ever seen. So there you have it, my friends. Massive update from Donald J. Trump talking about his plan with the economy. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Take care. God bless. We'll talk soon.